This week, I got a call from somebody in Illinois who follows us on Instagram and wanted to try our product. She ended up spending over $3,000 on cutting boards with us. Uh, cutting boards, sight unseen. She didn't know anything about our YouTube channel. She didn't know anything about our Jenny and Davis social media side of the house. All she knew was our Samara Table Co. Instagram that had like barely more than 2,000 followers. Social media is powerful stuff for a small business. You don't need to be Instagram famous to have success selling on social media in your small business. You don't need as many followers as you think you do to make a big difference to your bottom line. You don't even need to be that good on camera. And I know what you guys are probably thinking, you've been on YouTube for six years now, of course you're not scared of social media. Well, we are two very nerdy database scientists who were never supposed to succeed on social media. And uh, we've got some tips for you to help you grow despite what your personality might be. <laughs> Hi, we're Jenny and Davis. We're scientists who fly through hurricanes and somehow stumbled into being entrepreneurs. Today, our goal is to share with you some of the big keys to success that we've learned and a few secrets we've discovered about running social media accounts that can help you in your small business. We've got some tips to help you overcome your fear of being in front of the camera so that you can make the most of your time on social media as a business owner. I'm telling you, these have worked so well for us. I used to be the type of person who was so scared to do anything on social media. I wouldn't even like a post on Facebook of my friend's engagement photos. I just hated social media that much. And now look at you. And now I'm here and I'm so glad that I learned some of this because I never would have met any of you guys had I not learned how to stop being afraid of all this. So today we're going to briefly look at all the platforms that are out there, all the major platforms that are here in 2023. We're going to give you a brief overview and then tell you how we decided which one was best for our business. And then we're going to talk about what it means to make good content. What makes a post actually convince the viewer to do business with you? We'll talk about getting in front of the camera and overcoming the, the stiffness and the, the nerves that come along with, with doing that because that was a fear we had to follow for a long time before we got good at it. I still don't think we're great at it, but we're much better than we were. <laughs> and finally, we'll share the biggest secret about social media that almost everybody overlooks and how it can bring you more sales in your business. So let's dive in. Okay, so it is 2023. Let's talk about the main platforms that are out there for social media. You've got Facebook. You've got YouTube, you've got Instagram, you've got TikTok, you've got Twitter, or X now, I guess, and LinkedIn. The first step to understanding how to be successful on social media is to know the, the vibe of each platform. So for example, Facebook is where your grandma goes to share recipes with you. YouTube is where you go to watch the extreme ends of humanity do something insane. It's sensationalized. Instagram is where you post your vacation pics that look seamless and effortless, but they really took three hours to set up and get perfect lighting. TikTok is where we go to share a laugh even though we're all depressed. Twitter is where we get into angry fights with strangers. And LinkedIn is where you submit your resume and try to look corporate and professional at all times. Your customers are probably spending more time on one of those platforms than anywhere else. More than time with their family, more than time with their jobs. It's really kind of sad when you start to look at the statistics of how often people spend their free time on these social media platforms, but that's where the customers are. So you got to meet them where they're at. And the most important part is knowing which one of these platforms the majority of your customers are on so that you can optimize your content to solve a problem for them and sell your product. That's it, that's all content is, is you're trying to solve a problem that someone has. Okay, so how in the world do you choose the right platform? You wanna pick the one that the most number of customers you have are on. So how do you know which platform your customers are on? Step one is to just know who you're trying to sell to. Whatever your business is, whatever it is that you sell, try to write down everything about the average of your customers. Are they male or female? Are they young? Are they old? Are they wealthy or are they struggling to make ends meet every month? Are they corporate? Are they entrepreneurs themselves? 
If you can figure out all of these things about your customer, you can sort of look at the landscape of social media and say, oh, yeah, um, I guess I really am selling to soccer moms in the suburbs. They're probably on Instagram more than they're on Twitter. So now you know I need to make good content for Instagram. Mm -hmm. Our target customer base is realtors and other middle-aged professionals that have the purchasing power of their company. And these people are on Instagram, I've found. So I put the majority of my time and effort to Instagram. So for you and your business, you've got to figure out who your customer is. You've got to figure out what platform they spend the most amount of time on. And that's probably the one that you should start to make content for. I don't think anybody's really struggling with this. I think most people know kind of where their customer is at. People seem to know like what platform they want to start on. So anyway, we'll move on to the next step. So once you've picked a platform, the only guaranteed way to grow a big following and reach the most amount of customers as possible is to force feed that platform as much good content as possible. And that's it. I know it sounds super simple, but it's literally just posting a lot of good content. It's very simple, but it's very hard to do consistently for a long period of time, especially if you are a really busy business owner. But if you post a lot of content for long enough, eventually something will pop off and do really well. And I promise you, you will have no idea that it's going to be that piece of content and you'll have no idea when it's coming. Our number one video is one of the worst pieces of content we have ever made. On YouTube, I can literally fly through the center of a hurricane and only get 5,000 views, but I do a, a tour of my house showing off my amateur furniture and we get 2 million views. That is just how social media works. So the only guaranteed way to grow organically on social media is just to post a lot of good content for an extended period of time. So what does it mean to make good content then? Well, what's worked really well for us is to try and show in every piece of content how your product is solving a problem for the customer. You have to use your brain here. This is kind of difficult, but if you can get this right, it makes content production much, much, much easier. You can't just post pictures of your products in the middle of your dirty workshop. That's how you get woodworking followers. And unless woodworkers are your customers, you probably want to make a better piece of content than that. If you can reliably show how your product solves a problem for your customer, then the social media algorithm is going to show that piece of content to more people that have that problem. Because who likes and engages with your content determines who the platform shows it to. So if you're just getting a bunch of double taps and hearts from woodworkers and other business owners, it's probably only going to reach more woodworkers and business owners. But if you make signs on your CNC and you can write somebody's name on the sign and make it look really cute, you can show that that solves a problem for new moms trying to decorate their nursery. And all of a sudden, Instagram is going to show all your pictures of your baby signs to new moms. And if you show that you're reliable over a long period of time, then new moms are going to trust you with their money when they go to decorate their nursery. See, the customer doesn't just want to see a product showcase on social media anymore. They want to be entertained, educated, and engaged with your content. So you need to actively show how your product is solving a problem. You need to show how your baby name signs can match with any other decor in a nursery. You need to show how your baby name signs are personalized for the theme of the nursery that they're making. So I know we've just thrown a lot at you and you're probably feeling a little overwhelmed. That's okay because it's much easier if you batch out your content. When you get a couple of good ideas, write them down and then come back to them once a week or once a month to batch out your content. And by batch out, I just mean make 15 or 20 pieces of content at one time while you've got the creative juices flowing. If you have the space, keep three or four different little stage setups uh, in the corner of your house or your garage where you can take product photos. We have four or five of these set up around our studio and warehouse ready to go at a moment's notice. Here, uh, we'll show you around. So obviously something as simple as just filming in front of our computer desk uh, can be a nice little backdrop uh, with just one light here. If you look behind the light, we can also sit at this couch and make that a nice filming angle. And for product photography specifically, Jenny has this little desk set up with just some uh, colored foam boards. You can also get these uh, framing mats from Hobby Lobby for like six bucks or so. 
Um, you can also get just a dollar piece of foam board from the Dollar Tree. Um, we've used this as a background for our cutting boards for a long, long time, but having a little photo studio like this set up in the corner somewhere really comes in handy when you just need to post a, a picture of your product. So we've got some samples here that Jenny always just rearranges and makes look pretty for Instagram. Oh yes. I've also got this little backdrop set up so I can show off my boards and create content in this corner all the time. When we first moved in here, I specifically painted this on the wall because I knew the first thing I would need when we moved in was a spot to start creating content that I could post to get known. When we were on the news, we actually made a backdrop out of our warehouse. So you don't need anything fancy. We just wanted to show that we were fully stocked and ready to fulfill orders when we got our little 30 seconds of fame on the news. So you don't have to spend a ton of money. You can just do a couple of small tweaks with uh, just a couple of lights and maybe a nice plant in the corner um, to make a boring space look really nice. Mm. The single best thing you can do for uh, your photo or video setup is get some sort of light. This is a ring light. It's like 30 or $40 on Amazon. Um, just go to Amazon and type ring light and you'll find one of these guys and it'll hold your phone and it just makes everything look 10 times better. See, light, no light, light, no light. All right, so let's say you are all ready to go. You've got your backdrop, you've got your lighting, and you sit down and you're like, I don't know what to post, I need some ideas. One tip that we recommend to people is to use tools like ChatGPT to help you generate content ideas and scripts, basically faster than you could on your own. If you wanna learn how to use that tool specifically, go watch the video we just made about ChatGPT and how to utilize it in your business. We'll link it up here as well as at the end of the video so that you can go watch it after hitting subscribe. Please, please do not waste six hours of your time trying to come up with content ideas. There are things like ChatGPT that can do it for you way faster. You need to spend your time creating and posting and commenting and all that good stuff. Let something else do the hard work for you. Literally go to ChatGPT and type in, I am a small business that makes personalized signs for baby nurseries. Give me 10 pieces of content that I can make to post on my social media page. And it'll spit out 10 ideas that you can implement within the next five to 10 minutes. Okay, so that's all well and good, Jenny and Davis. I get it. I have to post just a ton of content. It's basically a full-time job. Cool, got it. But I am deathly afraid of getting in front of that camera. I can barely hit record, nonetheless create a piece of good content. You are not alone. The fear of getting in front of the camera is one of the biggest things we hear from our friends in the stud stack that keeps people from getting started when it comes to posting good content on their page to sell their products. That's normal. When you first start filming content, you hate seeing yourself on camera. You hate the sound of your own voice. Like literally right now, I hate looking at myself in the little camera screen that's to the right of the center. It drives me nuts. And you're always worried that somebody is gonna think your information is dumb or, or that you sound stupid. Those feelings never really go away, but you're not alone. Everyone feels that way. So how do we get over that fear? First off, I'm gonna tell you, you look great. You sound great. And your product is not dumb and useless. There are thousands of people out there ready to buy it. They just need to know that you exist. So if I can convince you that those feelings are not true and it's just your emotions getting the better of you, let's talk about how you can desensitize yourself to those feelings. You wanna film yourself as often as you can and you don't even have to show it to anybody. If you mess up, just start over again with your sentence. If you mess up, just start over again like it never happened. And before long, you can make a really nice piece of content. If you want to just go for a walk and talk about your favorite tool, like the table saw, um, talk about when you got it and why it makes you happy and why it's your favorite tool. Um, nobody is going to know. Even if you, somebody sees you on the sidewalk, they just think that you're FaceTiming your friend. Um, but then once you're done, you want to stop the video and go back and watch it. That way you can get used to seeing yourself and listening to your, your voice. You can't skip that step. You have to go back and watch it from start to finish. 
I don't know why, but our brains just do this thing where we don't like the sound of our own voice because it sounds different in our head, but it sounds... It sounds different in our head than it does on camera, and I think that just like messes with us. I don't know. But the more you do it, the less it bothers you. But just like I'm doing right now, record a video on your phone and then go back and watch it, and it's okay to mess up. Hopefully, I've left in some mess ups of filming this. It's okay, you can edit those out. It's really not a big deal. Just learn to get used to being in front of the camera and talking to yourself. You don't have to show it to anybody until you're ready. You want to be expressive and animated, and I'm working really hard right now to do that. Go back and watch some of our old, old YouTube videos, and you'll see me just kind of stiff and stuck up and just like weird. And anyway, it's not a good energy. You just want to practice being overly animated because the camera is going to take out about half of your uh, emotional state. So you want to make sure that you're being overly expressive, overly animated, and that'll make really good content. Anyway, you never have to share or show anyone these videos when you're practicing, and it's okay to feel nervous. Jenny and I still feel nervous, but eventually you're gonna get to the point where it's more like a chore, it's not something new anymore. And once it feels like that, you can focus your brain power on making the content instead of worrying about how you look and sound. And the reason we put so much emphasis on this is because people buy from people. When you're good at communicating and making good videos of yourself, people on the internet trust you more and they really get to know who you are and your personality. It's like actually sort of knowing that person. And you'll be a pro at building trust with your customers so you can so you can solve their problems with your product. One thing I know about you, it's true about us too, is you genuinely care and love your customers. You want to solve that problem for them. That's why you make the products that you make. So it's not sleazy. It's not trickery. You're just trying to communicate like humans do that you want to help them. And that's awesome. But you're doing good. You're posting content. You're getting in front of the camera. You're showing how you're solving a problem with your product. But at the end of the day, you're a business. You have to ask for the sale at some point, but you can't do it too often. So what's the best balance? Well, one post out of the four is the absolute most that you want to ask for the sale. So let's say you make four posts in a span of two days, really only one of those should be physically asking your customers to buy something from you. I mean, think about it. The market has already determined that that's the ideal ratio. On TV, there's 12 minutes of ads for every 43 minutes of television. On Facebook, there's one ad for every four posts you scroll past. But in that one post, don't be shy. Literally say, please place your order on my website. My link is in my bio be direct. And then in the other three posts, you can entertain them. You can show how your product solves a problem. You can have a little bit more fun, but in that one, ask for the sale. And really four to one is probably the highest you should go in that ratio. If you only want to ask for the sale one in every five posts, that works too. But if you want to build more trust, you have to ask less often. Because if you ask too often, people aren't gonna wanna follow you, they're gonna have a hard time trusting you, and it's gonna slow your growth a little bit. So you have to kind of balance growth versus asking for the sale. But five to one, six to one, seven to one, those are all good ratios to start out with. If you wanna learn more about this topic, there's a really good book by Gary Vaynerchuk called Jab, 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 Right Hook. And he basically talks about this topic more in depth. This is something that we've been really bad at, but we are trying to get better at now. Okay, so we've talked about all the different social media platforms. We talked about how we decided on what platform was best for our business to make content for. We talked about content and how to reach your customers. We talked about how to overcome some fears of getting in front of the camera with some little exercises to help us get over the hating the sound of our own voice. And we talked about how often to ask for the sale on social media. That's a whole video. There's so much packed into that. I hope you learned something, but we've got something else to add. And this is something that almost everybody overlooks on social media. And it's going to sound overly simplistic, but if you can f keep this at the forefront of your mind, you will do so much better than everybody else on social media. We have to look at every person on social media as a person. 
not as an account, not as a feed, not as a political enemy, but as a human being, because that's what they are. And one of the best strategies we've found to gain followers and to actually get people to purchase a product from us is to leave encouraging messages on their account. Because at the end of the day, there is a human on the other side of that phone or that computer hitting post and responding to comments. Every account that you see is a human being and they're putting just as much effort into their content as you are into yours. And so when you leave an encouraging comment, when you like something, when you share something to someone that you think they might think is funny, that means a lot. That's why one of the best strategies that we've found to gain followers and to gain people who are interested in our product and want to buy is to leave encouraging comments on their accounts because it's it's a human at the end of the day, right? So we find accounts of what we think might be a potential customer and we just leave encouraging little breadcrumbs. So how I typically do this is I'll find a hashtag, uh, something like Houston brunch. That probably has some people who might want some cutting our charcuterie boards. And then I'll go to some of the posts within that hashtag and then I'll just leave a really nice comment. Like, um, wow, this looks like a gorgeous restaurant. It looks like you guys had a really fun time here. Or, hey, I love how you gathered your office team together and took everybody out to brunch today. I'm sure that really meant a lot to them. And I'll do that for maybe, you know, a dozen or two dozen posts on that hashtag. And the hope is that they click on your profile and see what you do. And then next time they need something that you make, they'll probably reach out to you. I mean, it, it's happened so many times now to us. It's almost like second nature. So it's really cool to see social media being used um, for good uh, instead of evil. But it just takes more people on the platform doing the right thing and treating other people like people for the whole platform to get better. So if you learned something in this video, we would love the chance to share a video with you again. Please hit that subscribe button and the bell to get notified next time we upload a video about our crazy lives as hurricane hunters and entrepreneurs. So thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one. Ask me how I do it, I just stick to the plan.